The seven and a quarter inch gauge sweep Williams steam locomotive part 24. After removing the temporary hydraulic test sealing plate, I applied two coats of HMG satin black paint to the boiler back head. A couple of days later, when the paint was dry, it was time for a test fitting of the superb three coat water gauges. When the boiler was away being tested, the plate was made so that the boiler would be watertight. I think they must have used Arnold Schwarzenegger to tighten these bolts. They were incredibly tight. With a standard Allen key, it took quite a lot of effort to loosen the first one. I screwed it all the way out and put it in a box. Now it's time for the next one. The next one was even tighter. I'm not exactly a weakling, but I couldn't do this by hand. Necessity is the mother of invention, so I use one of my Barco adjustable spanners. These are so well engineered, you can use them as clamps. And here it is in action. In this clip, you can see that the Allen key was actually bending, but eventually it gave way, and I was able to remove the second one of the Allen cap head bolts, which I put in the box with the other one. The third one, however, was quite easy to remove. Really, I shouldn't be using my delicate piano player's fingers for such jobs, but in reality, playing the piano for many years means my hands are quite strong. I was dreading the last one because things always go wrong on the last one, but this one came out OK. It didn't end there, though. Once I'd removed the four Allen bolts holding the plate to the boiler, I had to hit it with a copper-faced hammer. And look, it's not what you think. Two things to notice here. The outlet from the boiler is the top one, and it's quite rusty. The bottom hole isn't rusty because that goes all the way through the boiler to the wet header. The purpose of this neatly made plate was to support the O-rings, which, like the ones on the regulator here that I have in my hand, I used to seal around the tubes. Using silicone O-rings for this purpose is quite good, really, and the regulator bolts in place, as I'm showing here. For the hydraulic test, only the top tube needed to be sealed, but when the regulator's in place, it will need to seal both tubes. The firebox is a separate assembly that goes into this hole, and it's held in place by these two clamps, which is a bit of a pain. I think I will make some special fittings that you can undo and tighten without having to use a socket or a spanner. What I'm doing in this clip is using a piece of Scotch-Brite to scratch the surface of the paint. And now it's time for some painting. I'm using HMG Satin Black Paint, which is a really good paint for miniature steam locomotives. This paint is excellent stuff to use, and it's not prone to running or sagging. I applied the first coat, waited 10 minutes, and then applied a second coat, so this should be okay. Masking the area would just have been a waste of time. I used an old t-shirt instead, which was quite effective. At this stage I can't do anything else until the paint has dried and hardened. Time to remove the t-shirt, and as you can see, it's formed quite an effective barrier against the paint. I'm really pleased with the look of this paint. It's great stuff to use. Don't forget what it's called, HMG Satin Black Paint C71. And I have no deals going on with HMG. I just sing the praises of this paint because it's good. I thought it would be a good idea at this stage to loosely fit the Allen bolts back in place just so I didn't lose them. I want to test fit the water gauges to see what they look like. But before I do that, I would like to show you these. They are pieces of brass from which I will make two water gauge protectors. And I'm going to make the water gauge protectors in exactly the same way as I made the single one for my traction engine. Here it is, and it's very effective. It stops the water gauge glass tube from getting broken. The logic being that if you can't break the glass tube by hitting it with the shovel accidentally, then it's probably not going to break, so it doesn't need any glass around it to protect the driver. This one, fitted to my large model showman's engine, works perfectly. Here are the parts for the two three-cock water gauges, complete with blow-down valves. 
These are beautiful things to look at. They are very well made and nicely polished, and changing the orientation was very simple. All you do is move the handles of the isolation valves to the other side. Nothing could be easier. When you buy a pair of these, the valves are in the left-hand orientation, and I changed this one so that the handles are on the right. I'm loosely screwing the parts in position so you can see what they're going to look like. The gauge glasses are not going to be anywhere near as long as the one fitted to my showman's engine. And looking at the position of these, the bottom nut has a good margin of error relative to the position of the firebox crown. One down, one to go. I'm now fitting the left-hand water gauge, and you can see that the handles face in opposite directions. I've always liked the combination of brass and satin black paint, and this is no exception. When it's finished and all together with its water gauge protectors, the back head is going to look really good. In my hand are four pieces of brass bar. They are 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter, and I will cut these down to fit between two plates at the top and bottom of the water gauges. The design of these water gauges allow you to fit the blowdown valves in any position. At this moment in time, I'm thinking that the handles for the blowdown valves need to be inboard so you can operate them with a shovel. I'm not certain yet, and I don't have to make the decision at this stage. I can do that once the water gauges are fitted. I wanted to leave this image on screen for a while because the water gauges look really nice. Now it's time to revisit the turret, and to be honest, I have some misgivings about the tap in the centre. It doesn't look right, so I'm going to think about doing something with that. In fact, an event in the next video made it very apparent that this globe valve wasn't going to be strong enough for the job. I have a better idea. More about that later in the series. Initially, when I threaded these two holes at the front of the turret, I used a taper tap. Now I'm using a plug tap to go further in. Here I'm threading the other side, and now both of these are 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. Once the tapping operation was completed, I blew away all the swarf using an airline. Here's the injector steam valve fitted. All of the other holes on this turret are threaded 1 8 BSP, which is quite similar to 3 8 by 32 threads per inch, except 1 8 BSP has only 28 threads per inch. I will be fitting copper washers to these valves to make sure they're in the right position. At the moment, they're just loosely fitted into the turret. When I fit them for real, I'll be using some Loctite 542 thread sealant and shim washers to make sure they're in the correct position when they're tightened. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.